welcome to another edition of What Fresh Hell? Raw Stories Roundup of news items that might have become controversies under another regime, but got buried, or were at least underappreciated, due to the daily firehose of political pratfalls, unbend tweet storms and other sundry embarrassments coming out of the current White House. The New York Times reported this week that Donald Trump was briefed in March that a Russian intelligence unit that has been linked to assassination attempts and other covert operations in Europe intended to destabilize the West or take revenge on turncoats offered Afghan insurgents bounties to kill U.S. troops. Islamist militants or armed criminal elements closely associated with them, are believed to have collected some bounty money, according to the report, which was confirmed by the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. Twenty U.S. service members were killed in Afghanistan last year. Advertisement Trump was given a menu of potential options to respond to the attacks, but the White House has yet to authorize any step. A month later, in late April, Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin issued a rare joint statement commemorating U.S. and Russian forces linking up in Germany during World War II, saying it was an example of how our countries can put aside differences, build trust, and cooperate in pursuit of a greater cause. Two weeks later, in early May, he bragged about his efforts to forge closer ties with Russia to a gathering of Republican lawmakers, saying, all of a sudden, we have this great friendship. And, by the way, getting along with Russia is a great thing, getting along with Putin and Russia is a great thing. Later that month, he outraged other Western leaders by inviting Putin to attend the G7 meeting. He then spoke to Putin about getting Russia readmitted to the organization that had expelled it over Russia's annexation of Crimea. There has long been speculation that Russia has some sort of compromat on Trump. Mythical Pete tapes aside, Trump has long-standing ties to the Russian mob dating back 30 years. Russian money poured into Trump world when no bank would give him a loan after his casinos went belly up. Russian oligarchs and other members of the country's elite have reportedly snatched up $100 million worth of his tacky properties in Florida alone. He made over $50 million on one strange real estate deal with Dmitry Rublev, a billionaire oligarch. Advertisement If Russia has dirt on Trump, that may be the best case scenario. Because what are the alternatives? That he's such a narcissist that Putin's praise so flatters him that he's willing to overlook Russia putting bounties on US troops' heads. That he's thanking them for meddling in the 2016 and 2020 elections on his behalf. That it's just an act of trolling or revenge against the intelligence community and the FBI for embarrassing him with their reports of Russian interference and subsequent investigations? Or is he looking to assure that Russian cash continues to flow into his businesses after he leaves office? Maybe he still has high hopes to get the Trump Tower Moscow deal off the ground. If the commander-in-chief is continuing to do Russia's bidding after being informed that they're paying people to kill US soldiers because they could destroy him, or possibly land him in prison, that would at least be an act of self-preservation. The alternatives are pettier, and would show that not only can he be bought off, but that he can be had cheaply. This is troubling, to say the least, advertisement The Pentagon is facing a hemorrhage of talent as senior officials resign amid continued efforts by the White House to purge those perceived as political foes, including the Army Lieutenant Colonel who testified in the House impeachment hearings. In all of the cases, Defense Secretary Mike Esper tried to push back against the White House, officials said, but failed and was left to offer only a thanks for their service. The departures come as Mr. Trump has precipitated a standoff with the military over a number of issues, including whether to deploy active duty troops against protesters or rename military bases that honor Confederate officers. New York Times, Rick Bright, the Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, whistleblower who detailed how the agency's pandemic response was hobbled by cronyism and corruption has filed another complaint alleging ongoing retaliation against him for bringing those problems to light, which is illegal. 
advertisement there never was a China deal. China and the Trump regime gave different accounts of their phase one agreement, which was unenforceable. But Trump got his headlines. Fast forward to this week, a trade deal worth $200 billion between China and the United States is fully intact, President Donald Trump said Monday night, just hours after his senior trade advisor rattled markets by saying the pact was over, according to NBC. Four days after Trump invoked the Defense Production Act to ramp up the production of PPE, Eric Beach, who had no experience in supplying medical goods, formed Colt International Incorporated. Touting connections with 3M. Beach is also the co-founder of the Great America Pack, which has raised more than $40 million for Mr. Trump. The PAC has produced attack ads against the president's opponents, including rival Joe Biden. CBS has that story. Advertisement Meanwhile, a company created by a former Pentagon official who describes himself as a White House volunteer for Vice President Mike Pence won a $2.4 million dollar contract in May, its first federal award, to supply the Bureau of Prisons with surgical gowns, according to ProPublica. We've had at least one story like this in our roundups virtually every week. The grifters are out in force. If only we had a law and order president who would stand up to looters. In a newly announced rule, Education Secretary Betsy DeVoe has signaled she is standing firm on her intention to reroute millions of dollars in coronavirus aid money to K-12 private school students. HTTPS colon slash slash t dot co slash 60 open 1 TCV, NPR, at NPR June 26, 2020 Advertisement Crew, officials from the Department of Transportation, DOT, Office of Inspector General, OIG and outside colleagues were shocked to learn that President Trump replaced acting Ig Mitchell Bem, a long-standing member of the office, with a political appointee, according to new documents obtained by Crew. At the time of his demotion, Bem was overseeing a high-profile investigation of Transportation Secretary Elaine Zhao's alleged favoritism benefiting her husband Senator Mitch McConnell's political prospects. The records crew received suggest that one of the subjects of that investigation informed them of the shakeup, and allude to larger concerns about Trump's pattern of installing loyalists. Only the best people. Retired Army Brigadier General. Anthony Tatter, who was nominated to become the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy at the Department of Defense, promoted conspiracy theories that John Brennan, the former CIA director, wanted to oust Trump from office and pushed a bogus conspiracy theory that Brennan sent a coded tweet to order the assassination of Trump in 2018. CNN, Donald Trump fired the head of United States Agency for a Global Media, which produces Voice of America and other outlets, and appointed a loyalist, Michael Pack, to run the agency. Pack in turn fired a bunch of senior officials, raising concerns on both sides of the aisle that Trump was turning the government's media operations into pro-Trump propaganda outlets. This week, a lawsuit was filed alleging that Pack didn't have the legal authority to purge many of the organization's leaders. According to the New York Times, the suit also claims that in firing the chiefs of Radio Free Europe slash Radio Liberty, Radio Free Asia and the Middle East Broadcasting Networks, Mr. Pack violated a firewall clause in a federal broadcasting law and agency regulations that shield the government-funded news outlets from political interference and manipulation. Speaking of things that are illegal, in a two-to-one ruling, a 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals panel found that diverting $2.5 billion Congress had appropriated for the military to pay for Trump's stupid war violated the Constitution and is unlawful. Reuters reports that Donald Trump's administration is considering ending a long-standing system for congressional review of foreign weapons sales, congressional aides said on Thursday, a plan that would face stiff opposition from his fellow Republicans as well as Democrats.
This is awkward, Kosovo's president, Hashim Thaisi, was indicted on a range of war crimes charges, including nearly 100 murders, the special prosecutor in The Hague announced Wednesday, just three days before the leader was due at the White House for a special summit with Serbia, according to The Washington Post. The Trump regime slashed the CDC's budget, ignored it advice repeatedly and thoroughly demoralized what had been the world's premier public health agency. Now Politico reports that they're trying to blame CDC for their own deadly negligence managing the COVID-19 outbreak, and we'll leave you with some good news this week, as a federal judge in Los Angeles on Friday ordered the release of migrant children held in the country's three family detention centers, according to the New York Times, that their parents, most of whom are asylum seekers, continued to be detained is still a human rights violation. Enjoy good journalism? Then let us make a small request. The COVID crisis has cut advertising rates in half, and we need your help. Like you, we here at Raw Story believe in the power of progressive journalism. Raw Story readers power David K. Johnston's DC report, which we've expanded to keep watch in Washington. We've exposed billionaire tax evasion and uncovered White House efforts to poison our water. We've revealed financial scams that prey on veterans, and legal efforts to harm workers exploited by abusive bosses. And unlike other news outlets, we've decided to make our original content free, but we need your support to do what we do. Raw Story is independent. Unbinged from corporate overlords, we fight to ensure no one is forgotten. We need your support in this difficult time. Every reader contribution, whatever the amount, makes a tremendous difference. Invest with us. Make a one-time contribution to Raw Story Investigates, or click here to become a subscriber. Click to donate by check. Value Raw Story? Then let us make a small request. The COVID crisis has cut advertising rates in half and we need your help. Like you, we believe in the power of progressive journalism, and we're investing in investigative reporting as other publications give it the axe. Your story readers power David K. Johnston's DC report, which we've expanded to keep watch in Washington. We've exposed billionaire tax evasion and uncovered White House efforts to poison our water. We've revealed financial scams that prey on veterans, and efforts to harm workers exploited by abusive bosses. We need your support to do what we do. Raw Story is independent. You won't find mainstream media bias here. Every reader contribution, whatever the amount, makes a tremendous difference. Invest with us in the future. Make a one-time contribution to Raw Story Investigates, or click here to become a subscriber. Thank you. Let's block cats. Why? Show your love for him. Click the link in description. Thanks for watching.